Hello everybody. So today is day two and of my testimonies and I did not forget um, we had a family dinner and I'm just getting back but I wanted to make sure I gave my second testimony. So if you didn't see number one you need to go out there and see it um, for 12 days. I'm going to be giving testimonies of God's goodness and his miracle working power. This is something that he led me to do and I pray that it'd be a blessing to those who are in Christ. Maybe those who are not in Christ um, God will get the glory. If you are in Christ, maybe you need some hope, you know, some inspiration. I know I've been down many a times and sometimes just hearing stories of other people and just being reminded of who God is. Um, King David said, I will bless the Lord at all times and forget not his benefits. And one of the ways we forget not his benefits is to remind ourselves of who he is. So day two, I don't want to give a lot about car wrecks, but for whatever reason, um, as I've been praying and just asking the Lord um, to, you know, lead me in the testimonies and just to show me the the miraculous power in my life, uh, um, the evidence of him being there so many times, um, I could see another incident where um, it was dealing with a car wreck. So I wanted to share this with you because this truly was a miraculous situation, Um and once again, it was another drunk driver. I don't know what it is about me and car wrecks. I've been in several where I've been hit, um, where it should have killed me. Um, but it didn't, to, thanks be to God. But my husband and I was in Atlanta, um, Georgia. We, our family had a reunion and I think this was probably about 17 years ago. I think it was in 2001, maybe. Um, and, we um were visiting my sister. We were having our reunion there, and my husband and I decided to go um two days early to spend some time with my sister and her husband, um, who was living in um Atlanta at the time. Um, they both were at work and we were like, What are we gonna do? Let's go to Six Flags. So he and I decided, you know, we were gonna go to Six Flags and just have a day of fun while the two of them were at work and we would catch up with them later. Well, it was 8 o'clock in the morning. Now, who was drinking and driving at 8 o'clock in the morning? Well, it was 8 o'clock in the morning, and we were heading out. And she lived in an apartment at the time. And um, we were actually sitting and waiting, like coming out of her apartment complex, to enter into the main road and um, waiting on traffic to flow. Well, while we were sitting there waiting, all I could see was this car coming, flying directly towards us and there was nothing I could do because the where I was sitting and I couldn't move I couldn't do anything and it was quick like even though we could see it it was within seconds because he was going so fast and he was coming straight towards me I was driving um my husband was on the passenger side and he was literally coming straight towards me as soon as he got to right where our car was right where um the uh it's kind of like a median between entering the apartment complex and going out, he hit that part. And there was this big plant that they had right there um, for decoration, for landscaping. And he hit that, which slowed him down. He still hit me, hit the side of the car where I was, and his his car flipped. It was like a TV. It was a movie. His car flipped. We're watching this. We're sitting in the car. He hits the side door where I am. His car flips. Lands on our hood and then flips back into the street upside down and was spinning. And um, I couldn't believe, I thought I was gone. I thought I was dead. And um, I just couldn't believe it. And there he was. We're looking at him. He's upside down in his car. And all you can hear is his music blasting and playing loud. And my husband, I think I was in shock for a minute. And I remember him shaking me. And he was like, you know, like, are you okay? Are you Okay. And um, the door was wedged in on the side where I was on, so I couldn't get out. But when the um, police got there, we just stayed in the car. Um, when the police got there, they just could not believe from what they had, you know, had seen as far as the wreck. They could not believe that it did not kill me. Where there was a woman who pulled her car over and stopped. And she was riding behind him. She said that she saw him gearing off and coming in our direction. And she said she just screamed, Jesus! And when she came over there, she was hugging me. She was just like, my God. She said, I thought you was dead, baby. And I and I didn't have the time to call Jesus because it was so quick. And she called him for me. 
And I thank the Lord because the word says that he who dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. It says God will give his angels charge over you. And once again, he had given his angels charge over me. When the police were um, looking at the car, they said that had he not hit that median and it was like his wheel turned. And it, that was like the breaking point. He would have went straight through, probably would have killed me instantly. And it probably would have possibly killed or severely injured my husband. Um, that's what caused his car to flip when he hit that. It still hit me, but it caused it to flip. And then when it landed on our hood, they said if it would have been an inch, just a, an inch more, that it would have shattered the entire windshield, which probably would have caused severe damage to us, cut us up. Um, really badly and none of that happened we walked out without a scratch even though the door was um jammed in you know wedged in on the driver's side and of course he had the most damage because his car flipped on our top of our car and then flipped back into the street but he still survived and of course that's always how it is you know those who drive drunk so don't drive drunk because the choices you make today um affect your tomorrow not only your tomorrow but affect somebody else's he could have killed us so i don't know what it is about the enemy and car wrecks and him trying to take me out on the road but he has not been successful he's tried and attempted many 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 times but i just want to tell you that there's power in the name of Jesus. That lady called Jesus' name. And when she did that, I truly believe that God's angels manifested themselves. Something came to cause his will to turn into that median instead of coming directly into me. And like I said, even when you have the police and people on the scene and their mouth is just in awe and they're like, there's no way I'm looking at you. Like, how did this even happen? But we know how it happened. And that woman knew how it happened. And thank the Lord that God had put somebody you know, in that situation who knew Jesus, you know, who called his name on my behalf. So, you know, sometimes we have to do that too. We have to intercede and call on the name of Jesus for other people. So just know that even, you know, if when things seem like they're coming your way and it seems like the enemy is trying to take you out, he cannot take you unless God allows it. God is all powerful. He's all knowing he's in control of the universe. And sometimes he does allow things to happen, but he did not allow the enemy to take me out once again. So I just want to say that's testimony number two. I hope you all are blessed. Um, I'll be coming back for, um, the next 10 days, giving more testimonies as the Lord leads me. I've just been praying and asking him just to show me what the people need to hear. So God bless you all. Have a good night.